morning. Thank you. Very interesting developments with NIMSA. Yeah, just uh, tell us about that and how you see uh, the scenario play out over the, the weeks and months to come. Well, today we have the start of the ANC-NEC meeting. And I know high up on the agenda is the NUMSA debacle, they call it. I think, I think it's quite healthy for South Africa and for politics and obviously for democracy. Uh, NUMSA being the largest trade union within the Kasatu umbrella, they're still within the umbrella despite the fact that they've stopped paying their subsidiaries to Kasatu. Um, NUMSA have said that they want their members to feel free to vote for any parties that they wish to vote for. They're not going to be supporting the ANC. They've actually withdrawn their election funding for the ANC, and that's a big, this is a big issue, and the press seems to have missed out on this. Um, ANC does need funding, and it, NUMSA have, and I think quite rightly so, withdrawn their funding from the ANC. Uh, what's happening now is that obviously the ANC has to sit up, take note of what the trade union movement is saying, and in particular, the largest trade union in South Africa. And in fact, NUMS is growing at quite a rate because they've also said they're going to be taking people away, members away from NUM, the National Union of Mine Workers, yeah. uh, which is also interesting because AMCU, another union outside the umbrella, have threatened to strike next week. So what's happening is NUM is getting weaker. The Mine Workers Union is getting weaker. NUMSA, which is the metal workers of South Africa, is getting stronger. It's 350,000 members. And with those 350,000 members, they are an enormous clout. They've also made all sorts of statements saying that they must look to the future, possibly for a socialist party. Uh, I think we're going to have a Labour Party for the next elections. We're probably not going to have it for these elections. Mm. It's too close. These elections will be at the end of April, so that's much too close now. But it will have ramifications beyond everyone's expectations on the ANC. It's going to weaken the ANC, and the ANC needs to sit up and understand that at the end of the day, the union movement has to serve its members. It can't serve a political boss. Yeah. Um, and I think that's very interesting for us in South Africa as citizens. We need to watch this closely. Uh, with the passing of our beloved Madiba, uh, we, this came off the agenda. But yeah. it's back very much on the agenda now. And I think it's going to be the topic of discussion we're going to see within the ANC ranks over the next two days when they have their NEC meeting, which starts this morning what? in Umpumalanga. Wanted to ask you about that. What, what, what sort of response do you expect uh, from the ANC and then uh, the, the alliance members? Well, we're already seeing Gwedi Mantash, uh, who sits at the very center of the ANC. Uh, we're saying, he's saying that maybe uh, we can't sacrifice our relationship with Kosato in particular and with NUMSA um, in general. Uh, and they're saying that maybe with the Vavi issue, which is one of the key issues that caused the, the meltdown of Kosato, uh, maybe they should overlook the Vavi issue and bring him back. Uh, so Gwedi Mantash is hinting at that. Uh, the ANC is running scared. Um, they're saying that this is one of our chief constituent bodies and we're not having their support for the next elections. You must understand that uh, the ANC Youth League is also a bit of a dead duck um, in the sense that they're almost bankrupt. Um, they're not sure who their leadership is and they're flailing. Um, so if that's the case, then the ANC itself um, is now forced to stand on its own two legs and instead of relying on the tripartite alliance, yes, the Communist Party um, is strongly behind them, but that's a tiny little party. Yeah. Um, they don't have all that much clout. You, you mentioned a little bit earlier that uh, you see the rise of a, a Labour Party or, or a socialist-style party. Uh, do you see a guy like Zola Zima Vavi as, uh, as an automatic choice to lead this new grouping? Uh, oh, absolutely. This is a very powerful man. He is uh, vivacious, he's popular, uh, bright, sharp. He's got a direct goal. Uh, this is a man we need to watch, maybe not for these elections, but for 2019, um, because I see him as the head of a Labour Party, 
And I see that Labour Party overtaking many of the smaller parties and being a direct threat to the ANC. They're obviously not a threat to the DA because their membership base is going to come from traditional voters from the ANC. Uh, I, I see the ANC as the direct sufferer of this, and so they need to be very careful as to how they handle this man. I suspect that the rough treatment that he had is now going to start calling its toll, and uh, the man is standing behind the scenes. He's behind NUMSA at the moment. They've invited him to his conference, if you recall, at the end of last year, 20th of December, we had that watershed conference of NUMSA, where they then said, we're not going to pull out of the Kasatu, but we're going to stop paying our dues, and we're not going to tell people they can't vote for the ANC, but we're going to stop, vote, stop our general support, and we're going to stop paying towards the ANC. And who was sitting there? Mr. Vavi was sitting at the center of that. Thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to the resolutions coming out over the next couple of days at the NEC meeting. But thank you for that contribution. That's Michael Bachraim, who is a, a, labor, a labor lawyer and a labor specialist and analyst who joined us from Cape, Towns, from Cape Town.